sleeping in our grave, if not there, lying in the hospital, on our bed of affliction, or even sick at home. But I'm so glad we're here in the house of God, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a hand praise this morning, if you're glad you're here. It was David that said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet stand within those gates, O Jerusalem. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another Sunday, another day that we could come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask, God, that you will edify us today, that we may edify your people. Sanctify us, Father, set us apart for your purpose, for your use, and for your glory, that you will get all the praise and the honor today. We ask, God, that you bless those that are on their way here, that when they reach this destination today, they'll find everything done decent and in order. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence here today. I ask that you would anoint from the pulpit clean down to the door and set your church on fire once more that the world can see us burn for you. This is your servant's prayer. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. amen. At this time, we ask that you would stand for our responsive reading. Our responsive reading is found in our program and we will read responsibly. I'll read the light, you read the dark. When you have found it, please say amen. amen. And it reads thusly, Listen to my word, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. For you are The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. But I, by your great love, can come into your heart. In reverence, I bow down toward your holy temple. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you all together. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a sword. Amen. Remain standing for our congregational hymn. It is also in our program. In the name of Jesus, victory is mine.
seated. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. This time we'll have our church announcements by Sister Connie David following a selection from our male choir. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Please join Pastor Rainsbury on the Monday morning prayer line at 6.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., please join us for prayer and meditation. And then at 7 for Bible study. Um, I notice on the bulletin that it says Pastor's Wedding Anniversary on July 4th. So we don't know which one it is. <laughs> Doesn't matter, huh? Just, we just, we're, yeah, which, 26 years. So on July 4th, Pastor Rainsbury and Miss Janice Rainsbury will be celebrating 26 years of matrimony. So we want to congratulate them now and again on July 4th. 26 years, that's wonderful. God is good. Now we'll have an announcement by Deacon Dodd Stanzel about BBS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just uh, up to remind you, VBS starts next week. It starts on Monday, okay? So I need to see adults, children, teenagers out. So uh, please bring your children out to VBS. We're going to start at 6.30 from 6.30. I know it's 6 o'clock. Uh, what did I say? Oh, this week. <laughs> This week, this week, this week, this week, okay? This week, tomorrow, starts tomorrow, 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 okay, okay. All right, all right. Okay, so please come out tomorrow and bring your children, your teenagers, your nieces, your nephews, because we plan to have a great time. You see, we got the uh, fellowship hall, uh, fellowship hall, the sanctuary all decked out yeah. to make it look like it's going to be fun. There's a lot of learning going to be going on. So please uh, bring your children out and adults, you come out also because we have a class for you. Now, today for the kickoff, we need everyone who plans to come to Vacation Bible School to come upstairs to register. If you don't have your kids here, but you know you would bring them, please come and register the children also. We have light refreshments upstairs, and we also have a gift for the children. Any child that registered will get a gift today. Also, all the volunteers, to include the teachers, the assistants, the recreation workers, the arts and craft helpers, uh, worship rally uh, helpers. We need all of you to come upstairs, because Sister Sue Ann is up there preparing for a brief training session for you. You all need to get the information that she's going to tell you. So we need everyone upstairs during the kickoff to participate and so you can be fully briefed on how Vacation Bible School will run on tomorrow, Monday. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will do what? Rejoice. Rejoice. And be glad in it. So glad to see all of you here today, even those of you worshiping with us by way of Facebook and, and live stream and on our uh, conference call. Thank you so much for being with us today. Life is a gift. Yes, sir. That's why it is called the present. Yes, sir. On next week, not this, really next week, <laughs> Monday, the 30th, Sister Safi Sisse will be celebrating 70 years of life. And she doesn't mind me saying that. 70, you know. <laughs> the birthday is the 29th or the 30th? The 29th. So on next Sunday, on next Sunday, she has invited all of us after church to please join her in the fellowship hall and let's celebrate. Amen. Each time, anyone, any year you get, it's worth a celebration. Amen. That's why we have birthday parties. But next week, 
Let's gather together following worship. Let's join uh, Safi upstairs with family and friends and celebrate God's goodness to her. Uh, this is a lady who has been faithful, faithful to the West Highest. Have I got a witness? Has been faithful to the West Highest Field Baptist Church, man, you know. And so we want to show her how much we appreciate her, but she asks that we please join her at this time on next Sunday following worship service. Let's eat some cake, drink some punch, and whatever else she brings, let us enjoy that time together to celebrate three scores and ten. Amen. That's how young she is. Isn't that something? So let's join together and have a wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But for today, for right now, let's get in the service and let's have ourselves a hallelujah time. Come on, Bob. Give somebody, give God the praise. He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. 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 I go if I have to go by myself. I go if I have to go by myself. Oh, if my mama, I say my papa, my brother, no my sister. I go if I have to go. By myself. Go by myself. I sing if I have to sing by myself. I sing if I have to sing by myself. Oh, if my mama, I say my papa, oh, my brother, no, my sister. Oh, I sing if I have to sing by myself. Listen to this church. I pray if I have to pray by myself. I say I pray if I have to pray by myself. Oh, if my mama, I say my papa. Oh, my sister, no, my brother. Oh, I pray if I have to pray by myself. I say, send me. Say, yeah, I send me. I say, send me. Say, yeah, I send me. Say sometimes I'm tired and sometimes I'm worried. Say sometimes I'm lonely. Oh yeah, I and send me. If the preacher won't preach, if the church won't sing, say if the choir won't sing. Say sometimes I'm tired and sometimes I'm lonely. I go if I have to go by myself. I go if I have to go by myself. Oh, if my mama, I say my papa. I have three sisters, 
no my brother I say I go 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 if I have to go by myself listen to this church I say I pray if I have to pray by myself are you going to pray with me? let's pray with me, come on I say I pray if I have to pray by myself oh if my mama I say my papa oh my sisters no my brother oh I pray if I have to pray by myself Come on, church. Mm, I say, send me. Send me, I go. Say, yeah, all right, send me. Send me, I go. Oh, send me. Send me, I go. Say, sometimes I'm tired. Send me, I go. And sometimes I'm worried. Send me, I go. And sometimes I'm sleepy. Send me, I go. I say, if the church won't send me. If the choir won't preach, send me, I go. Say, yeah, right, and send me. Send me, I go. Say, send me, Lord, send me. Send me, I go. Say, send me, Lord, send me. Send me, I go. I go if I have to go by myself. church say amen. amen I'll go if I have to go all by myself amen. send me Lord I'll go I want to give the choir a hand for that selection yeah. I'll pray if I have to pray all by myself it's praying time it's the time that we can Cast our cares upon the Lord, for he cares for us. He tells us to take his yoke upon us and learn of him. For he's meek and lowly in heart, and we shall find rest for our soul. For God's yoke is easy. All his burdens are light. And God specializes in those things that seem to be impossible. Prayer is the key. And faith unlocks the door. This time, our very own Deacon John Limus will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. For there is no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where shall I go? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for waking us up this morning. For starting us on our way. We just thank you, Lord, for being Lord God Almighty. We know that you died on Calvary for our sins, and because of that, we can face life today. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. For if it wasn't for your grace and your mercy, we would not have been here today. But because you are our God and our protector, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for all that you have done. You have brought us thus far in this year. And we just trust that you will continue to carry us through. Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless the sick and the shutting. We just ask you, Lord, to touch them one by one and name by name. You know what the problems are. You know what the aches are. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are a great physician. We know that you can heal them. When the doctors say there is no way, we know that you have a way. You can make a way out of no way, and so we continue to trust you. We continue to put our trust in you for all that you have done and continue with do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for this branch of Zion called West Heiser Baptist Church. We thank you for the pastor, the members, and the leaders of West Heiser Baptist Church. We thank you, Lord, for putting us here, O Lord Jesus, so we can be a light for the world out there. 
so that people can see us and say, yes, there is a truth and living God. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, Pastor Rinsberg and his family. We ask you, Lord, to continue to give him knowledge, understanding, and wisdom as he's continuing to lead, lead us. For it is said that with of uh, a way the people perish. And we just thank you for giving us this great leader. We just continue to pray for him so that we continue to give him that strength. We ask your Lord to go into our communities. Lord Jesus, we know that there are different things happening each day. They are violent each day in our communities. We just ask your Lord Jesus at this time to just touch someone who's on the verge of doing harm to someone, oh Lord Jesus. Just touch their heart and let them know that there is another way beside violence. There is a way of reconciliation, oh Lord Jesus, where they can talk with one another. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to be with the word universal, Lord Jesus. The part of the world that there is war, part of the world there is famine, we just ask you to touch every part of this world. Though that are having problems against each other, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to let them know that there is a mediation table instead of the battlefront, Lord Jesus. So we just ask you, Lord Jesus, each and every day to continue to bless us, O Lord Jesus. You know all of our needs, O Lord Jesus. What we fail to ask you, Lord Jesus, fail not to grant it unto us, because you know what our needs are. Just ask you, Lord Jesus, to continue to be in our midst. Continue to be in this service as we go through. And be with us, O Lord Jesus, as we are about to start vacation by our schools, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to be with the leader of the vacation by our school, Sister Don, Lord. Continue to lead us as he continues to lead this effort. Protect the vacation by our school, Lord Jesus, from all harm and danger, Lord Jesus. Hope that everything will go as planned, that you will be in the midst of everything. And at the end of the day, we will say thank you, Lord, for another successful vacation Bible school. We know that you can do it. We trust you. You have done it before, and you will continue to do it for us. These and many other blessings will actually be in your name. Amen.
say amen. amen. Let's say amen again. Amen. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've found a Savior. Mm -hmm. And he's sweet, I know. Yeah. Psalmist said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Blessed is the man and woman that trusteth in him. There's no one to them that trust in the Lord. He's sweet, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. This time we're going to have a selection from our scripture. Oh, scripture. You're right, Pastor. I'm I'm looking right at it, <laughs> right through it, looking right through it. I guess I'm excited to hear the word of God. Amen. But at this time, we'll have our scripture from Lillian. She'll come and give us our scripture. Following that, our male course will come with a selection of their choice. And the next preaching, teaching voice we'll hear will be that of our very own pastor, Pastor Thomas Jefferson Rainsbury. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. All right. The mic? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, thank you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today, the word of the Lord will be from the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verses 1 to 5. The Lord says that I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned, to, he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the man and mare. He set, me, he set my feet on the rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you where I too speak and tell of your deeds. There would be too many to declare. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. I get joy when I think about oh, these I get joy when I think about what these done for me. Oh, I get joy when I think about oh, these done for me. Oh, he saved me. He saved me. Oh, he changed me. And he healed me, then he filled me, so that's what, what he's done for me. Oh, I get joy when I think about, oh, what he's done for me. 
Oh, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, and say he saved me, he changed me, he changed me, he healed me, he healed me, then he filled me, and that's what he's done for me. Oh, I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, I get happy when I think about what get happy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, he saved me, he saved and me. he changed me. He changed oh, he healed me, he healed oh, he filled me, he filled oh, he blessed me, he and my God, he kept me. He kept oh, me. he fed me, he fed and me. he led me, he led that's me. what, what? Bubbling in, my, bubbling in my soul, a little bit of joy, joy. bubbling up in, bubbling in my soul. Oh, oh, joy. joy, bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. peace like a river, joy. bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. it's in my head, joy. bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. oh, it's in my feet, joy. bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. it's in my head. Joy. Bubbling in my, bubbling in my it's soul. It's all over me. Joy. Bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. And no sing joy. Joy. Oh, joy. joy. A little bit of joy. joy. Oh, oh, joy. joy. We have joy. joy. There's joy in the Lord. Joy. There's peace in the Lord. Joy. There's grace in the Lord. Joy. And oh, we have joy. joy. A little bit of joy. joy. Oh, peace I get joy when I think about oh, what he's done for me. Oh, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, does anybody get joy when we think about oh, what he's done for me? And he saved me. Oh, he changed me, and he healed me, oh, he filled me, oh, he blessed me, and my God, he kept me, oh, he fed me, and he led me, and that's what he's done for me, oh, and sing joy, bubbling in my, a little bit of joy, bubbling up in, oh, peace like a river, Bubbling in, my, bubbling in my, oh soul. my God, brings me joy. joy. Bubbling up in, bubbling in my soul. oh it's in our heads. Bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. it's in my feet. Joy. Bubbling in my, bubbling in my soul. oh it's in my soul. Joy. Bubbling up in, bubbling in my it's soul. all over me. Joy. Bubbling up in, bubbling in my soul. And no sing joy. joy, oh sing joy. joy. Joy when I think about oh, what he's done for me. Oh, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, and I get joy when I think about oh, what he's done for me. Oh, when he saved me, he saved me. Oh, he changed me.
these men yes, sir. Yeah, we have blessed us today for singing out of their hearts. I want to thank Sister Lillian for reading our scripture today, Psalm 40, uh, the 40th Psalm, if we can turn back to that. Uh, she read from verses 1 to 5. I'm going to deal with verses 1 to 3 as we look into what the Lord has to say to us on this day. Psalm chapter 40, or the 40th Psalm, verses 1 to 3. If you have it, say amen. 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 I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. times, in ancient times, 
Pips had many functions, including the incarceration, destruction, and desertion of prisoners. Amen. Persons were sometimes held in pits until a course of action was decided against them. You remember in Genesis chapter 37, uh, a young man named Joseph, Jacob's youngest son, Joseph, his brothers were jealous of yeah. him and uh, threw him where? In, in a pit and kept him there until a caravan of Ishmaelites were on their way from Gilead to Egypt and they sold Joseph as a slave. They took him out of the pit, but they did not know in their mind he was in the pit, but he was on his way to the palace. I wish I had somebody. What man may do for evil, God means for good. Sometimes pits were used as dungeons and or prisons. In scripture, the word pit carried with it a negative connotation. Uh, whether the word was used metaphorically or literally, there was nothing good about a pit experience. Amen. If you found yourself in a pit, you had only one objective, and that is how to get out of the pit. It is in this place that, that David writes about and tells us this morning that he was in a pit. Look at what David said says about this pit he was in. It was a horrible pit. Yeah. The word horrible in the text means noisy. It means tumultuous. It means that there was no peace. It means there was no rest. He said the pit was composed of a miry clay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a muddy and slimy substance. The pit that David was in uh, was made up of a soft and sticky substance. It was like quicksand. Uh -huh. It was like standing on quicksand. The more he tried to get out, the deeper he went in. The more he tried to get up, the more or the deeper he went in. Now, are you getting the picture? Yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah. knows what it feels like to try yeah. to get out of something, but the more you try to get out, it yeah. seems like the deeper and deeper and deeper yeah. you're going in. I yeah. wish I had a witness. Yeah. Amen. This is the pit that David was in. Yeah. He was in a place of despondency and despair. No matter how hard he tried, he yeah. could not get himself out of the pit. He needed help from a power that was greater than his. Yeah. If you're listening to me right now, and after all you have done, you are, you are not experiencing any success getting out of that dark, dismal, and distressing place that you are currently residing, listen to this testimony yes, of someone who was in the pit, on, but he survived yes. the pit. Amen. In his testimony, we find, first of all, in his testimony, his reaction to the pit experience. His reaction to the pit experience. Look at verse 1. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined his ear unto me, and he heard my cry. I waited patiently on the Lord. I did not go to some healing and deliverance conference. No, I waited patiently. I didn't ask anybody to prophesy into my life. I waited patiently. I didn't take a plan A and B to see my way out. No, I waited. How? Patiently. David did something that many of us may find difficult, especially when we are in our individual pits. David waited. Now, it is interesting how David constructs the opening statement of verse 1. Because when you look at verse 1, it looks like patiently and wait are two different words. But from the Hebrew, they're actually the same word. 
He says, I waited patiently. But the word patiently and waited are actually the same word in the Hebrew. So it seems as though David was saying, I waited. Yes, sir. And I waited. <laughs> because that structure means that his waiting was intense. Yes, his sir. waiting was intentional. He said, I waited. Uh -huh. yes. It's like that song we used to sing a long time ago. I cried and I cried. Yes, I cried all yes, not long. I cried and I cried until what? I found my until Lord. I found the Lord. David said, I waited. And I waited. Yes. This grammatic construction indicates that David was persistent yes, in waiting for the Lord to become active in his situation. The word waited in the text means to look for. Yes, sir. It means to hope. It means to expect that something will happen. Yes. That was David's attitude in the pit. Yes, sir. He waited. Yes. But he didn't just sit down waiting. Didn't just sit down doing nothing. No, he was expecting. Yes, sir. He knew that something would happen. The word waited is the same word, James, that, yes, that, that Isaiah, that God used yes, in the people, the people of Israel in Isaiah chapter 40, uh -huh. verse 31. But God said, they that wait yes. upon the Lord. Yeah. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall run and not be waiting. And that, and, and, and what was God's response? Did, did David stay right there in verse one? What was his response? David said, "And he inclined unto me." And heard my cry. Yes, David, David could not do much in the miry clay. But David knew he could always pray. I wish I had a witness here. Because sometimes with the noise in the pit, sometimes with the slime in the pit, you can't find time. David said, I don't care what's going on here. I'm going to cry unto the Lord. And guess what happened? The Lord inclined his ear yes. and heard his cry. The word inclined is a very, very interesting word. The word inclined means to bend down. Catch the picture. You ought to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your struggles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. Listen, you just got to call him. David said, I was in the pit, the miry clay, this stinking, nasty, dirty place. But I cried unto the Lord. 
and he heard me. He took a bow down to me. Well, because David waited for God and cried unto God, there's something else that happened. Look at verse 2. Not only do we see the reaction to the pit experience, we also see, look at verse 2, the rescue from the pit experience. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, we'll find three actions, three things that happen. First, David said, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry cliff. Brought me up, lifted me up. I couldn't bring myself, but God's got all power Amen. to lift me from wherever I am. He said I was stuck in the clay. I was standing in the clay. I was sitting in the clay, but God heard my cry, reached down to me, and brought me up. Out of the clay. God did for me, David is saying, what I couldn't do for myself. I was powerless, but God is powerful. Have I got a witness here? He brought me up. Brought me up. But the second thing he did, he set my feet <laughs> upon a solid, upon a rock. Now, look, look, look at the difference in the foundations. Observe the contrast. He was standing on quicksand. He was standing on mud and miry clay. But when God took him up, God didn't just take him up and leave him hanging on there. No, God put him on a rock. Changed his foundation. And now he can stand tall upon a rock. Oh, not only that, not only did he take him out and set him on a rock, but he said, thirdly, he established my goals. What does that mean? He helped me walk right. He kept me from stumbling, kept me from falling into mischief, kept me from acting a fool and hurting myself. He established my goals. You know, sometimes God has to save us from ourselves. Yes, sir. I know we always talking about enemies and haters and all that. But sometimes we are our own worst enemies. The stuff we do, the stuff we say, places we go, the way we think, God's got to step in and say, hold up. I'm going to get you out of this clay. I'll put you on the rock. And then I will have to guide you, establish your goals, to make your feet stand on solid ground. That's why we can sing this song on, on Christ, the solid rock. I stand. All of the ground is sinking. Sand. Look at what David said in Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24. He says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Watch this. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down for the Lord upholdeth. Yeah. So while we're walking with weak legs and can't even stand, God comes and walk by our side and says, come on, you're not going to fall. I got you in my, I'm going to establish your steps. And everything that you're going through is going to work because I am right there by your side. We ought to be glad today Amen. that when we get out of the pit, God does not leave us alone because you know what would happen if he left us? We'll go right back. I wish I had somebody to help me today. If God left us alone, 
Can I get in y'all's business? You know, some people love to pit. Some people love to pit. I was driving the other day, what was that, Harper County, uh, and I was driving and <laughs> I saw this sign. It said, Pit Barbecue. <laughs> means what? They cooked it where? Where's, where's Eric? They cooked it what? In the pit. So it must taste good. And I can hear someone say, you know, pit is not all that bad. Yes, it is. Because sometimes if you get to the pit, you end up in prison. And so God has to establish our goings. Keep our feet on the narrow, straight and narrow path. And so David said, not only did he rescue me, but he kept me from destroying myself. He established my goings. We've seen the reaction of the pit experience. We've seen the rescue from the pit experience. Let's close with verse 3. Let's look at the result. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hope I can get through this part. Oh. The result of the pit experience. Oh. Yes, sir. When you've been in there, yeah. Yeah. you could have died. That's right. Oh. That's right. The Lord bent over, heard your cry, yes, sir. brought you up out of Put you on a solid foundation, on a rock. And then guide your goings, your footstep. Baby, there's only one thing left to do. Look at verse 3. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. A new song. I don't know what you were thinking, what you were singing before. Oh, but you got a new song. I don't know how the tune went because, you know, this song is actually written to a musician because David was a musician. He was, in fact, the subscription at the beginning of the verse says to the chief musician. So here a musician is saying I had to put away one or two old songs because God has given me a new song. I don't know the name of his song that he sang, but y'all, if the Lord has delivered me, out of a pit, I do believe I'll be singing praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'll be saying thank you, Jesus, for being mighty good to me. I'll be saying I will trust in the Lord until I die. Do you have a new song? David said, he said he put praise. He gave me not only a new song, he said, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and feel and shall trust in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, it ought not be the work of the preacher, the work of the deacon, the work of the choir to get you to praise God. When you think, I'm closing this thing. When you think of all, that God has done for you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you think of where he brought you yes. from. Yes. How you could have been in the grave today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you think about how he covered you. Yes, that your enemy couldn't yes. touch you. Somebody ought to be able to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
You've been good to me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not ashamed to tell y'all West Hyattsville, he's been good to me. I, I got to tell you, he's been good to me. Brought me a mighty long way. And David said, he brought a new song in my heart. And I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul shout hallelujah. 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 Thank God for saving me. If he's been good to you, you might as well get your praise on. If he's been good to you, you might as well go ahead and get your shout on. If he's been good to you, you better jump up from where you are and give God praise. You could have been in the pit, but God brought you out and put you on solid ground. Somebody said thank you. God in my footsteps. He said, there's only one result that can come out of this. I got a new song. And I got a praise in my heart. And that's what happens when someone who has been in the pit and survived the pit and is able to stand in the company of people. We can tell of our reaction in the pit experience. We can talk about our rescue from the pit experience. And yes, we can talk about the results from the pit experience. Somebody give God praise. Now, because this is the house of the Lord, because this is a place where God provides healing and deliverance, I don't do it. God does. I'm going to challenge someone today. If you are in a pit, if you're walking in mess, you keep sinking. <laughs> you, it's dirty, it's stinking, it's noisy. You're in a pit. You look up and can't even see the sunshine because you're in the pit. This could be the day that you can turn that pit experience over to God and do what David said. I waited patiently. He inclined. He heard me. He delivered me. Set my feet on a rock and guided my footsteps. And if you're here today, 
and you're in a pit, this is a good day to get out of that pit. If you're here and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you're in a pit. You are. But you can get out today. You can be delivered today, first of all, by having your soul saved by God himself through his son Jesus. If you would only give your life to Jesus today. If you're here today and you are saved, but you do not have a church home, you do not have a church family, this is your day to come and join us here at the West Highestville Baptist Church. Here in this church, many of us have testimonies of how good God has been. But we are a friendly church, a loving church. Most especially, we are the body of Christ. And if you, as a Christian, are not connected with a church family, a family of faith, we invite you to come so we can grow together. Be flat. So we can grow together and we can go together. But it's all up to you. Will you come and join us today? I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye, his eye is on. Is there another who will come? The sparrow. And I know he watches. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye is on the smell. And I know, and I know, God has been watching you all this time, even when others have walked away. Don't you think it's time for him, but for you, to give him your life, to give him your discipleship? To give him your time, your talent. To give him all that he has given back to you. All you have to do is say, I come. And he will receive you. As we hear from Sister Connie, the doors of the church are still open unto you. Come today. Come on today. Just the way you are. And God will. I sing because I
God bless you. God bless you. Um, Helen, yes. let's, let's prepare to baptize her the uh, fourth Sunday of, uh, of July. Um, let, let Michael know. Let everybody know. Yes. I didn't say everybody. I said everybody that we're going to baptize this little saint of Christ. Amen. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of heaven. First of all, we're glad to have you. She does look like Michael too. Isn't it? Oh my God. Not that look at her face. I can't. We will be happy to baptize you. We're going to prepare to baptize you. We'll turn you over into the hands of the uh, uh, Saye and the Kandak, and they will guide you in preparation for that. I look forward Amen. to filling that pool. <laughs> Mary Huey, we're back in business. <laughs> filling that pool and baptizing you on the fourth Sunday. Amen. Come on, let's welcome her to our family. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let us now prepare to bring our gifts. Well, first of all, are there any first-time visitors with us today? Any first-time visitors? Please stand. If you here for the first time, please stand. First time visitors, there's no visitor here for the first time, amen. So chances are you've been here for the second, third, or fourth time. And we're happy, happy, happy to have you. God bless you for coming and worshiping with us. Let us now prepare to bring our gifts unto the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. You can't be God-given. No matter how hard you try, the more you give, the more he give to you. The more he give to you. Father, we thank you now for this time of giving. We thank you now for this time of stewardship. We ask God you will please receive our gifts, and we ask it will be used, multiplied, and used in kingdom building. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming to lead us now in this time of giving.
I thought you, you should have kept on going because I saw the ushers dancing back there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, David danced unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah, when you think of all he has done, you know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, you get on the floor and the floor is open. <laughs> if you don't have a partner, that's okay. The Holy Ghost will dance with you. <laughs> Amen. We praise God for this wonderful, wonderful worship service today. I pray that all of you were blessed. And uh, we shall now prepare for our VBS kickoff. Amen. Looking forward to an exciting week. Please come and let us share in this wonderful time of Christian education, this wonderful time of scripture learning for our children, for all of us, as we come to grow in Christ. I pray that all of you will have a wonderful week uh, this coming week. Continue to pray for all those who are sick and sudden continue special prayer for Deacon Esther Richards. Um, as she prepares, she and the family prepare to celebrate the life of her brother, uh, the Honorable Othello Gonga, and then Deacon um, Brown, um, pray for him and his family as they prepare to celebrate the life of his sister, uh, Barbara, and pray that God would be with them all again. Let us support them. They always support us. So let us support them in this time of bereavement. Continue to pray for Reverend Lynette and James. Uh, celebrated, it was this Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday in uh, Lynette's uncle. We pray for the family. Her mother uh, was her mother's brother. So let's uh, pray for them, keep them in prayer. Glad to see Sister Annie DeRias in the house. <laughs> Sister Annie, we've been praying for you. Oh, my God. So good to see you here today. Continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for Sister Georgia and that God will continue to keep her in, uh, in his care. Always good to see uh, Stacy here, who is uh, still recovering uh, from surgery. Uh, pray for, for Sister Edna Bailey. Continue to keep her in, care, in prayer as she also continues to, um, uh, to recover. Uh, so again, we hope to see you on this week. Uh, we're having our usual um, morning meditation and prayer tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. Uh, please join us. And then um, Wednesday, we'll be here, right? We'll be here on Wednesday. Um, so who is scheduled to do Wednesday uh, meditation? Anyone here? Schedule to med uh, I'll make a decision on that because many of us will be here at 6.30 uh, and um, we'll decide, uh, well, I'll find out who it is and then make some decisions there. But either way, we're going to have a good time this week, amen, in this time of, um, in this time of uh, Christian education and, uh, and learning and pray that God will bless us as we grow together in Christ. Amen. Let us stand. What is your pit today? What pit are you in? Is it financial health? Is it relational, social, personal? What is that place that you're in today that is nasty, muddy, noisy, stank, dirty? And with all you're trying to do to get out, you keep going down. Today, we heard the testimony of a pit survivor. And in that testimony, we learned about his reaction. He cried unto the Lord. And God inclined his ear to him. But not only his reaction, we heard about his rescue. Because God heard him and then came and lifted him up. We saw his reaction, we saw his rescue, finally we saw the result 
off the pit experience. He got a new song. Yes. <laughs> and a praise on his heart. Whatever it is that you're going through, God can handle it. Yes. Give it to him. And watch him work in your life. Father, we thank you for this worship experience today. We thank you for what we have heard, what we have learned today. And now, God, as we leave this place, we ask that you walk with us. Guide us, O oh Lord. Lead us every step of the way. May there be something we can do in our lives daily that will bring glory to your name. Again, we pray for our Vacation Bible School. As we begin today and go throughout the coming days this week, we ask God for the children, the adults, for all to come. We pray for tremendous success. Thank you for Dick and Dot. Thank you for the teachers. Thank you for all who are joining together to make this a tremendous, tremendous experience. We ask now that you will deliver as you have promised in your word and that God after you do that for us, may we have the presence of mind to come back to the temple, yes. to this house, yes. to give you all the praise. Because, God, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all our praise. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest Rule and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say it together. Amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you this week.